Now, y'all may be very familiar with what I'm about to show you. Indeed, uh, my incredible brother, Gary, is the one that put together this incredible collection of, of Protestant commentaries that show us the connection of Hebrews 11 and 2 Maccabees. Indeed, this is one area where we really emphasize the importance of the Deuterocanonical books, and the reason being clearly the author of the letter of the book of the Hebrews, uh, the author of the epistle of Hebrews, was we very well aware of uh, the Maccabean text, 2 Maccabees, and not only hearkens to 2 Maccabees, but utilizes it in the famous Hall of Faith section of Hebrews chapter 11. The significance cannot be emphasized enough, even uh, utilizing a metonym, which, look, when we get into the, the, the area of saying, do we need the metonyms utilized in order to show that the authors of Holy Writ are indeed utilizing them to point to something that is sacred scripture? Well, we don't believe that they must be utilized in exclusivity in order to show that the author was hearkening to a book um, that they viewed as sacred scripture. They don't always utilize them for such, but in this particular area, it is utilizing it. It is pointing to sacred scripture. The figures are figures from the Bible, particularly the Old Testament, and the letter of the Hebrews hearkens to two Maccabees. And so the reason we're going to go over the, the commentaries, you know, briefly, is because we're going to build up to a little bit of surprise. You know, we frequently hear, okay, uh, you know, there's a lot of evidence, but did, did anyone in the early church catch this? And if anyone in the early church caught this, well, then that is incredible because perhaps they utilized this in sacred scripture, recognized the connection to the Maccabean books. Do we have any early Christian testimony? Indeed, we do. You should expect it if uh, the Maccabean books were utilized in sacred scripture. And they were. You find them in the early church council. So of course they're holy writ. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, dive in. We're gonna check it out. So the New International Greek Testament commentary, and by the way, this is put together by my brother Gary and I'm sharing it with you all is, uh, you can find it in another video that Gary has put forth here in the channel. If you have been edified with the information we've been sharing with you, please let us know. We love to hear, um, we'd love to hear your thoughts. The reference is once more to the figures of the Maccabean period, Eliezer, 2 Maccabees 6, 18 to 31, 4 Maccabees 6 to 7, and the seven brothers and their mother, 2 Maccabees 7, 4. This is uh, a uh, international Greek Testament commentary, scholarly work. The word biblical commentary, one of our favorites, indeed, when the brother Gary and myself, whenever we work on... Um, on uh, preparing debate material, or whenever we uh, are working on a book, we rely on the word biblical commentary to give us good scholarly insight. And this is, this is a particularly good book we recommend. The reference to the refusal of release and the enduring of torment in the context of a firm expectation of attaining the resurrection shows unmistakably that the allusion in verse 35b is to 2 Maccabees 6, 18 to 742 shows unmistakably specific references made to the hope of the resurrection in the account of the sufferings endured by three of the seven brothers, as well as in the encouragement offered to them by their mother. Work biblical commentary. We're not going to go through all 40 of them. We're going to look through a few of them. Remember, we need to recognize what do what are we shown and uh, we've done a number of videos. Uh, Gary has done fantastic debates where he brings this point out, where even the scholarly commentary show, show unmistakably the allusion to verse 35b is to two Maccabees. This is undeniable. We emphasize that. And this, this is a good one. The commentary, critical and explanatory in the whole Bible. This is pretty good. Notice how we have the reference here. Tortured, broken in the wheel, Eliezer, 2 Maccabees 6, 18, and 2 Maccabees 8, 20, 30. The sufferer was stretched on an instrument like a drumhead and scourged to death, not accepting deliverance when offered to them. So the seven brothers, 2 Maccabees 7, 9, and Eliezer, 2 Maccabees 6, 21, 28, 30, 
uh, a better resurrection. The fourth of the brethren, referring to Daniel 12, 2, is said to King Antiochus from 2 Maccabees 7, 14, to be put to death by men is to be chosen to look onward for the hopes which are of God to be raised up again by him. But for thee, there is no resurrection to life. Commentary in the Holy Scriptures from Lang, Shaft, and Kendrick. These examples from the life of the woman of Sarepta and of the Shunammite lead, however, again, immediately to the martyrdom of Eliezer and of the seven brothers along with their mother. We may presume with certainty, we may presume with certainty, therefore, that these examples of suffering are suggested by the narratives there recorded. A handbook in the letter to the Hebrews, the three statements of 35b are closely connected. They died under torture because they refused to accept freedom, since freedom was offered on condition that they give up their Jewish faith. Another scholarly commentary, word studies is gal again. Tumpanon, tumpanon means a drum or a drumstick, hence a cudgel. It is associated with kufo, a pillory, compared to 2 Maccabees 6, 19, 28. The meaning here is we're beaten to death with clubs. The word being used to represent cruel torture. For the verb, see in chapter 10, 34, the deliverance offered at the price of denying their faith. 2 Maccabees 6, 21 to 24. It is harkening there, showing you the connection must be made. Matthew Henry's commentary. This is thought to refer to that memorable story from 2 Maccabees chapter 7. The New Bible Commentary, some vivid examples of this occur in the Apocrypha. You're at the right place. You're in the Apocrypha Apocalypse right now. Where we crush the idea that these books are merely human writings. The author of the letter of the Hebrews recognized it was more, or clearly recognized that it was more. Look at this, even this connection is, is very clear though. Let's look for, let's go a little bit further. Uh, the Cambridge Bible for schools and colleges were tortured. The word means technically were broken on the wheel. And the special reference may be to 2 Maccabees, 2 Maccabees 6, 18 to 30, 2 Maccabees 6, 7, the tortures of Eliezer, the scribe, and of the seven brothers. We agree. The expositors, Greek New Testament, a standard that you've got to have in your library that Eliezer and seven brothers are alluded to is obvious, for it was characteristic of them that they died not accepting the offered deliverance to Maccabees 7. This is obvious. We agree. We agree wholeheartedly. There's really no doubt about that. So when we look at all of this incredible evidence, we then wonder, okay, you know, what is the significance? As I pointed out, there's biblical figures that are being utilized in exclusivity there in the book of Hebrews, Old Testament. The Old Testament is what is really being hearkened to. These great cloud of witnesses that we then read about in Hebrews chapter 12, we're reading about the hall of faith in Hebrews 11, that magnificent hall of faith. And these figures can only be found in one other area in the whole Bible, that being in the second book of Maccabees. The author to the letter of the Hebrews would have had in mind a canon larger, thicker, bigger than that of Protestantism. This is a major problem for Protestants and a major problem for anyone to deny the canonicity of the Deuterocanonical text in particular today, 2nd Maccabees. We must emphasize that. So as much as we emphasize the importance of everything we've been covering, it's very vitally important to dig into the early church fathers. We still have yet to get to the real meat and potatoes of what we want to talk about today. But before we do arrive there, we'll look at St. Cyprian of Carthage, the great St. Augustine, the great St. Ambrose, we'll mention St. Gregory of Nazianzu, St. John Chrysostomos. Uh, these magnificent early church fathers, uh, many of them doctors and saints of the church, spoke of the festival of the Maccabees that was celebrated in the early church. Indeed, 
by the time we get to the early 200s, we've got St. Cyprian showing us clear indication that this, this feast day, this festival of the Maccabean martyrs was well established in the church. Shall then the burning of the temple of the Valentinians also be avenged? But what is but a temple in which is a gathering of heathen? Although the heathen invoke 12 gods, the Valentinians worship 32 eons whom they call gods. And I have found out concerning these also that it is reported and ordered that some monks should be punished, who, when the Valentinians were stopping the road on which, according to custom in ancient news, they were singing psalms as they went to celebrate the festival of the Maccabees, enraged by their insolence, burnt their hurriedly built temple in some country village. So we read about... Um, Notice how he doesn't say as they went to celebrate their festival, but as they went to celebrate the festival of the Maccabees, well established at that early period, brought forward forth in, uh, in the great St. Cyprian. So all of this will lead to something, as we point out, something very significantly important. As we point to the fact that the early church and the ancient apostolic church we emphasize the ancient apostolic united Catholic Church. We read of these festivals being shared, being, um, being uh, celebrated, excuse me. They are of the Maccabean martyrs, these figures that appear in the Deuterocanonical book of the uh, second Maccabees. Cyprian is very clear about that. So is the great Saint Ambrose of Milan, Ambrosio. The great Saint Ambrose of Milan, is you know he also puts it forth in a magnificent manner so you know we've got the um you know the great saint ambrose we can find it in um in uh excuse me in saint cyprian we can find it in uh saint augustine another figure that briefly touched upon and and i i, I bring him up because it's so uh vitally important that we focus on him as well as um St. John Chrysostom. Now, why do I emphasize so strongly St. John Chrysostom? He was a Greek scholar of the first order, a magnificent early church father and a Greek scholar. And um, you can find um, his work preserved. Uh, uh, where is it? It's on this fine webpage from John, uh, John Sandinopoulos, that is, you can find it here, the homily and the holy Maccabees and their mother. So really the point of us pointing this out is you've got this being celebrated very early on. These festivals are being celebrated. Um, <clears throat> we're building up, remember, I don't consider this um, evidence that ties second Maccabees in with um, Hebrews 11. But we're slowly showing you how the, the, the Maccabean books were vitally important in the early church. Two Maccabees is very important. The festival days were celebrated here. You know, you have it as early as, listed as early as the 200s. It was well established. Well before that, it was well established. So the great St. Augustine, multiple times in his sermons, multiple times he talks about the solemnity of the Maccabean martyrs the solemnity, the glory of the Maccabees has made this day into a very special feast day for us. When the marvelous account of their sufferings was read to us, we not only heard about them, but could practically see them as spectators. The great St. Augustine believed in the intercession of the saints. He was a magnificent early church father, believed in prayer to the saints, intercession of the saints, and... He clearly believed in purgatory, which we find in two Maccabees, but it's a topic we're going to cover at a later time. We'll cover that in a later show. We've done a number of shows in them. Uh, and if you want to see a, a, a fun purgatory debate, go look at my debate against Dr. Michael Brown, where Dr. Michael Brown uh, unfortunately was unable to deal with, with the text on purgatory well at all. And, uh, and he, uh, he demanded that we not uh, bring the early church fathers into cross-examination. That was a bit of a shocker of a debate. Dr. Michael Brown uh, did a lot of damage control after that and uh, no longer wants to debate me. Praise our Lord and Savior for apostolic Christianity. Uh, this is why I emphasize, get a hold of a complete Bible. 
learn your apostolic faith and you will be on fire for the faith and you'll bring people on over to the fullness of the faith. That fullness that can only be found within Catholicism. So St. Augustine, we have a number of early church fathers that are so important, vitally important in bringing this forth. But another figure is a great St. Ephraim. Now, what, what in major role does St. Ephraim play? First off, he's writing in the 300s. And he's considered one of the greatest doctors and fathers of the church. He is a pillar of, Eastern, of the Eastern Church. He's a pillar of the Syriac Church. He's a pillar of Catholicism. He's, he was a master of the Old Testament. I mean, note that down. He was a master of the Old Testament. I want you to wrap your head around that. He was a master of scripture, masterful. The great St. Ephraim had a magnificent teaching on the incarnation, had a fantastic Christology, had a magnificent Mariology. He believed that our holy Immaculate Mother was without any stain of sin. He equated her to her son in the sense of them being without any spot, any stain. They were sinless. The great Saint Ephraim is a magnificent early church father in multiple regards, but he's also the one who, whose commentary in the letter to the Hebrews is the oldest complete extant commentary. So we've got fragments of various commentaries here, but the oldest complete extant commentary can be found from St. Ephraim the Syrian. Now, it's a bit of a tough uh, ability to get hold of that. I have verified that, and I have verified the text of St. Ephraim from the top Syriac scholar on the planet, Dr. Sebastian Brock, who is a near and dear friend of mine. I'm very proud to say he's a near and dear friend of mine. I keep in touch with him. I love the man with all my heart. As a brother in the faith, he's verified the veracity of the text. And as the audience must know, it is the oldest. And in that particular text, the great St. Ephraim the Syrian says, in order not to repeat all the details in his review of the works of faith, Paul stopped relating the stories of these ancient fathers. So he's given commentary in the letter of the Hebrews. He believes St. Paul's the author. Awesome. I, I, I tend to, to, to fall in, that, in, in, in line with that as well. Deciding not to describe their actions in their different aspects. However, he did not omit other cases, which he included in a short account. That is, about the faith of Gideon, who defeated 10,000 Midianites with 3,000 soldiers in Barak, who by his faith destroyed the army of Sisera and Samson, who by his faith killed 1,000 men with a jaw of an ass, and Jephthah, who by his faith conquered 22 cities of the sons of the Ammonites, and David, who by his faith beat and killed Goliath, and Samuel, who by his faith prevailed among the Philistines and about the other prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms in prophecy, not in the sword, in forced justice, that is, through the revenges and punishments that they inflicted on the impious, received promises like Elisha, who went into ecstasy, stopped the mouths of lions like the house of Daniel, quenched raging fire like the house of Hananiah, escaped the edge of the sword like those whom the Chaldeans tried to slay together with the wise men of Babylon and also Uriah and Elijah and other prophets. One strength out of weakness, like King Hezekiah and Elisha, became mighty in war like Abraham, Lot, Moses, and Joshua, and put foreign armies to flight, like Samson, Barak, David, and his companions, who were mentioned above. This is pretty magnificent how he's going down the line of these great figures of faith as he provides his commentary in Hebrews 11. And then... Women receive their dead by resurrection, like Salomea and Zarephath, who had, for, who had them from Elijah and his disciple. Others, however, who were given to death despised their own life, like the seven brothers together with their mother. Like the seven brothers together with their mother, the women received their dead by resurrection. Others, however, who were given to death despised their own life like the seven brothers together with their mother. 
the great Saint Ephraim the Syrian, Dr. Saint of the ancient apostolic church is making that connection. In his commentary, the oldest extant complete commentary on the letter of the Hebrews, he's making the connection to Second Maccabees, even though they did not do what their companions had done in the faith. They nevertheless desired death in their expectation and believed that they would have deserved to obtain a better resurrection. Others had trail of mocking and scourging like Elisha who or were imprisoned and chained like Jeremiah and Micah. They were stoned like Moses and Naboth, son and two like Zechariah and Isaiah, tempted in different manners like Job and killed with a sword like Micah, Uriah and John. They went about in the skins of sheep and goats like Elijah and Elisha. They were destitute, afflicted and ill-treated of whom the world was not worthy. Like the prophets whom Obadiah hid and nourished with food, they wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And when Jezebel heard about the reputation of those hiding, she looked for them. But Obadiah made them run away and take refuge in other places. Their great afflictions testify before everybody that they remained in faith and did not even receive their promises. I cannot emphasize enough to you that the early figures that celebrated the canonicity, the fact that two Maccabees was holy writ, celebrated these festivals for these biblical figures. These incredible figures, early church fathers, patristic pillars that spoke about the fact that Hebrews was clearly hearkening to two Maccabees made that connection. These are massive figures of the faith. These are foundational figures. These are masterful figures. St. Ambrose, father of Augustine, spiritual father, master of the faith, master of Christology, St. Augustine, master of Christology, St. Cyprian of Carthage, master as well, incredible early church by their father, incredible writer, incredible defender of that ancient teaching of purgatory. St. Ephraim the Syrian, master Christologist, master Mariologist, and for that matter, so was the great St. Ambrose and the great St. Augustine. Notice how these figures we speak of, the great St. John Chrysostomus, dubbed the golden mouth. These are massively important figures in the church. And when anybody ever asks you, well, did any early church father or church writer draw that connection with two Maccabees in Hebrews 11, you tell them the earliest extant commentary from St. Ephraim the Great, St. Ephraim the Syrian, doesn't make that connection. You tell them the early church fathers celebrated the festivals. If the early church fathers, if every single early church council was gathered in council to talk about the books of the Bible, always included the Maccabean books, one and two Maccabees, particularly two Maccabees, because we're talking about that today. If they had that, and if the person you're talking to has a Protestant Bible, which is incomplete, you got to tell them, get yourself a complete Bible. If they're still in the fence. Send them on over to us here at the Apocrypha Apocalypse. God willing, they'll be edified by the material we're putting out. We'll pray for them. We'll pray for you. We hope you've been edified. God bless you. A lot more material coming your way, including special shows we're going to do, which are going to be celebrations of books that we have that are being released. Pray for us. We love you all, and we'll be praying for you. Come to the fullness of the faith. Get yourself a complete Bible. We love you all. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.